Today we are joined by Drew Hamill, a historian of the culture and the master behind your favorite sneakerhead's favorite Instagram, Nike Stories. Thank you, Drew, for joining us. We're super excited to have you on. When did Nike Stories like really start? Yeah, it launched when Instagram was taking off in, um, I guess Instagram took off 2012, 2013, and I was on there just in on a personal handle and I was just chatting with my wife and, and she knew my passion for sneakers and I saw other sneaker heads on there showing off what they had and I thought, all right, how can I get involved in this? So it actually started as um, the handle was the genius of Nike because I was just... <laughs> I thought Nike was genius and their designers were genius, yeah. their designs and how they market sneakers and athletes. Um, but very quickly, people were like, wait, so are you are you the genius of Nike? No, I'm not. I'm just <laughs> talking about how genius Nike is. So, And I, I realized a lot of these captions were more stories um, and explaining like, this is the history of this shoe. This is the history of this print ad. Um, so that's when I switched it over to Nike stories pretty early on. Okay, and is there a Nike story that you treasure the most or one that still impacts you today? I'd say meeting Andre Agassi, my hero, my idol. Um, I played tennis in high school, played varsity, tried to make my game as close to his as possible. I got to meet him at the US Open in 99 when he was on the rise again. Um, he was just practicing at the US Open and just hitting with his coach and his trainer, uh, Gil Reyes was there. And, uh, he came over, got his autograph, asked him a few questions, asked him about his sneakers, uh, what size shoe he wears, things like that. So it was, it was really uh, an amazing moment to actually meet my hero. What was about like his game or his impact on sh sneaker culture that kind of inspired you the most? Yeah, um, obviously the designs of the sneakers he was wearing were incredible. The Airtech challenges in the early 90s, the um air flare the air zoom ablaze the air zoom pounce um all amazing models most of them designed by wilson smith and then the apparel he was wearing as well dry fit material um shorts long sleeve dry fit shirts um everything to his racket the racket he was using the head racket but you could kind of see the similarities between agassi and the stuff he was wearing and what uh, nike athletes were wearing in basketball to the point where even like john stockton wore a pair of Agassi's shoes on the court and Gary Payton wore um, a pair as well. So so I, I loved uh, the similarities between the two sports. And you mentioned Wilson Smith. Mm -hmm. um, for people who don't know, he was a designer for Nike with a ton of legendary kicks under his belt who played a huge role in Agassi. And I know kind of inspiring you coming up. Uh, is there a specific design of his or maybe there are a couple that really have impacted you the most? For me, he's, he's primarily known for his tennis designs, but a lot of people don't realize he designed the Air More Up Tempo, which keeps coming back over and over again uh, with the big air on the on the upper and the um, Air Max bubbles uh, in, for cushioning. He designed that. And I, I was right when he was designing um, Agassiz's shoes, the Air Zoom Pounce, the Air Zoom Ablaze, um, the Air Flare, which is Agassiz's favorite. And Wilson and I, we chat, I don't know, once a week maybe. And we're in this little uh. tennis chat as well on Instagram. It's like 25 different guys around the world. We all love tennis and he, he'll once in a while pop in and just tell us a little story or, or send us a photo of something and, and blow our minds like, oh my God, that's so cool. I'm actually working on an article now about how hard it is to retro, actually retro a sneaker that hasn't been retroed before. Like there's a lot of work and a lot of people that go into that. Um, so it is my goal still to kind of unveil these stories and, and info to the common consumer that you just don't realize because we all complain about shoes that haven't come back yet but it's like no they don't have the mold for that anymore like they don't have the materials they don't have anything left they have to actually reverse engineer it do you realize yeah. how complicated that can be and how expensive you still want the shoe at 120 dollars so um and as far as sustainability goes, I think that's um, really important. Like my full-time job is, is not in the sneaker world. It's in uh, it's in retail, but with another company and we care about sustainability a lot as well. And in fashion and retail, there's a lot of waste. Um, obviously mm -hmm. you're shipping materials overseas on, on ships and on planes, and that's really expensive and costly and damaging to the environment. And shoes are coming in boxes and, and there's plastic and all these things that um, Nike and every other um, retailer can do better so I think they're aware of it and they're they're doing their best to to be more sustainable anytime a brand's like okay we're gonna shoot this sustainable message I'm like it's really hard yeah like when you just think of like from 
beginning to end is, you know, like so much waste, even when you think of like packaging and like the whole ceremony around all of it, it's definitely going to be quite a task to tackle. There's enough shoes already in the world. Like, you know, there's so many sneakerheads that have more shoes than they'll ever wear in their lifetime. So I think Nike and these new um, sneaker apps need to come up with creative ways for us to trade shoes, um, not just resell them to the point where maybe it's you're shipping the box to somebody or you give people incentives like us in new york in the new york metro area give us an incentive to actually meet up with somebody and actually hand the shoe over in person so we're not shipping it and uh, mm -hmm. spending that money you know and wasting a box um i think there's still a lot of potential there which most companies have not even realized yet so it's good that nike's looking into like this new refurbished program um, and some apps do encourage trading, but there's a long way to go with that. I think about it anytime I look at my sneaker collection, sometimes I'm like, I haven't worn half of these, or you find something that you're like, I forgot I even yeah. had these. And it's almost, I almost <laughs> sometimes I feel bad, but I'm like, I just can't let it go. I yeah. just can't let them go. Well, that's how I think of it. It's like, I have all, I, I have about a hundred shoes. Um, it, I could have 500, but I've gotten rid of a lot, most of them. Uh, but I try to be creative about it. So I'll obviously I have a pretty big network on Nike stories. So if there's anyone in the, the metro area, I'll try to connect with them and say, let's come up with a trade, kind of like baseball cards were in the in the 90s. Um, yeah, you trade, and I always think, okay, I have this pair, but what would I be willing to give it up for? And mm -hmm. I have a few in my mind. So then I look for people that have that shoe and see if they're interested, and then we we go from there. And that's always fun to do. I have a group chat where we're always just like, oh, what do you got? Like, mm -hmm. all right, well, I'll see what you trade in. It's like, it reminds me of just kind of back in the day how it was like in sneaker culture, where it was just like this subculture where you were just online in different chat rooms. Well, I have a size 10 yep. and this, this and that. Like, you know, what do you want to give up? Like, it kind of brings a bit more excitement to kind of like be in the community, right? And yep. just kind of like putting smiles on each other's faces. Absolutely. That's what it's all about for me is the community and, and having friends and, and sharing common, common interests. That's what I love about it. We now live in a time where collabs are just second nature. Is there a collaboration you wish you, that you wish could have happened back in the 90s? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, a collab, boy, oh boy. Well, I mean, there were so many legendary hip hop artists back in the 90s that were wearing Nikes. Um, Tupac and uh, Biggie and um, Wu-Tang Clan, um, they didn't ever have collabs did they i don't think um no like there's like later era like yeah you know a few years later it started but they didn't so that would have been crazy to see something like that back in the 90s and you were also a contributor for complex sneaker of the year which sits on my coffee table <laughs> um what was that like yeah that was um an interesting time. I had just started a new job and was super busy with it and didn't really have much time to write. But then I get a call from um, Gerald Flores, who was putting the book together with Complex and asked me to write. Uh, oh, he pitched the idea to me and said, asked if I wanted to write a few chapters. And um, I was kind of like, oh man, I don't even know if I have the time for this, but I have to say yes. Like, this is a huge opportunity. So I agreed to it and it was a really intense time in my life like it was a lot of late nights just doing a lot of research and these are big chapters right there are each mm -hmm. like five thousand words i think which is a huge <laughs> huge <laughs> task and i yeah and i wrote like five or six chapters plus some of the the bylines and um, side paragraphs and stuff um so i think it was like a six month process um and it was a lot of back and forth and a lot of proofreading but I got it done and I'm really excited with the outcome of it because um, it was a goal of mine to get into writing book, books. Uh, someday I do want to, you know, write my own book about sneakers. So I felt like I have to do this and, and whatever it takes to get it done, let's let's do it. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. and I'm, I'm glad people are enjoying it. No, it's amazing. I, it's one of my favorite things that sits on my coffee table. Anytime I have someone over, I'm like, just skim through it. I'm like, you don't even yeah. have to read it. I'm like, you just look at the stuff in there. Like it's very, very, very greatly curated. It's amazing. Thank you. I do wonder if people read all of it because it is, a, <laughs> it's it's a lot of words in there. And I brought it with me once on a plane and actually like cracked it up and was like, all right, like, let me read it. Cause I'm always, <laughs> I think 
like to your point when you were talking earlier, so many people have like love for like all of these silhouettes, but we don't always know the story behind them. And as I've gotten older, like I've cared a bit more. I'm like, all right, if I'm gonna like die for this shoe, like it's everything, like I should probably know who made it or like what were the thoughts going behind or different experiences that the shoe has had itself. So it's definitely really nice to kind of like sit back and get personal, you know, with these products that we just grow to love. Is that your goal as a writer and contributor? Yeah, I mean, again, like I just love connecting and curating. Um, so that's, I, I guess, something I, I love doing is just sharing, sharing the stories and explaining, do you understand why the sneaker is so important and where it came from? and who came up with it and what were the drawings behind it and what were the challenges they faced and what were the issues with building the upper like with the foam posit my god it was such a hard sneaker to come up with it would, uh, like and just the freedom these designers had in the 90s to just come up with whatever they wanted and make it yeah. a reality um is, is fascinating to me so um and like you said earlier, we can go on forever but talking about Nike and, and the stories. There's just such a, a rich history there. Um, so that's my goal in, in whatever way that is, whether it's through social media, through Instagram, through writing a book, through writing a blog post for East Bay or um, another website, um, just sharing that knowledge with people. Because that's what it was about when I was in high school at these um, shoe stores like the Athlete's Foot and Foot Locker. You needed to educate people on what they were trying on and explain, well, this is good for, for your foot because of these reasons. And um, you should probably not wear this shoe because it has this and you, your foot needs this. Um, that's what Nike's all about uh, overall as well as the athlete. And they believe everyone is an athlete um, and they wanna make sure that you're wearing the proper footwear for whatever um, sport or activity that you're, you're pursuing. Thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge and telling us your Nike story. It was a pleasure to get with you. I've been following you for a while on Instagram myself. So it's definitely great to kind of sit and be able to talk to you. Um, but thank you again for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.